think we're going to sit together and be very cosy. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. Lucky me. Does he back too quickly? You want to play that? I don't know. Actually, yeah, before that, actually, you took an effort. Yep. 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 That was very nice. Yep. Come from stunt work, right? That was very nice. What? You've done stunt work. Stunt work? Yeah. I've done a bit of stunt work. We've been. Yes, I have. Oh, here, here he is. Here he is. Jefferson Hall. Jefferson Hall. Oh! Hey! Nothing I'm making a mess That was absolutely brilliant. That was really good. That was convincing. Right, are we good? Yeah, we're all here now. Yeah, we're all here now. So, how are we all? How are we, how are we all getting on? How are we doing? Good, good, good. Lovely to be here. Lovely to be in my hometown. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, it's great. It's, uh, I've not done, done this one before, so. It's very, very wonderful. This is your first time? I am a virgin to this so way. Are you? Are you? It's very exciting. I'm not a virgin, but my mic doesn't... Does? Does it? It works. I'm not a virgin. <laughs> That's not the time you want your mic to work, isn't it? And you announce that to It's my first time here. Um, so, how's the Dragon then? Obviously, it's been a, a massive success. Um, which, obviously, coming up with a lot of paper frames before it would be. Tell us a little about your experiences, uh, you know, filming your parts, and then we'll talk about locations, and then we'll get questions, and everything. Gosh, what can we say? Well, um, well, one thing I can definitely say about Harold Westerling is he never sits down. He literally never, ever, there's no chair for Harold. That was one of the things that was very difficult for me, playing that part. I mean, not for, not for people like you, because you no, were sitting down the entire time. time. Yeah. Yeah, admin work. Yeah, yeah, just admin. Just, you know, totting up figures. Stapling, stapling, yeah. Yeah, I had to stand. Like, I remember the first time I walked into the small council chamber. I looked around all those great chairs and everything, and uh, I said, uh, I can sit, which, one, uh, which one's mine? They went, oh, no, no, you don't. You don't sit. Harold doesn't sit. I don't think he actually has a bed. I think Harold just goes and leans against the wall and cries himself to sleep uh, in his armour. Like a horse. You yeah. speak slamming. Yes, yes, yes. little ball of horse. Maybe I'm given a rope to sort of hang myself with. In fact, do you, yeah. do you sleep with your horse? Wow, that's so going, that's going into, You see, that's going into an area that's just really. Um, am I near my horse? Yeah, no, it's Westeros. I mean, anything can happen. Yes, the Targaryens get up to. Yes. So, yeah, it was, that was strange. But it was great fun. The armor was quite a challenge. Um, but we got over it. I remember. Fabienne, uh, who played Kristen Cole, he he, uh, he grinned and complained quite a bit about the armor, by the way. He That's not true. No, he was not that stoic about the standing. It's good. No, no, no. No, no, I did not complain about the armor. I just asked them to uh, make it a little bit more comfortable, which <laughs> is different. <laughs> That's not complaining, that's, that's just offering helpful advice. Con yeah, constructive criticism. Yes, constru <laughs> constructive criticism. Yeah. And they did, they took the constructive criticism, and they went away, and once they stopped weeping, they came back, and uh, they, they did it. Yes, 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 my, my shoes were very small. I think they actually gave me Kristen Cole's shoes, because mine were, we used to call Kristen Cole, Kristen Small. Which was very mean of us, I know, but you know, it's a long job, so people, you know. He, yeah, he still is small. We yeah, saw him the other day. Um, anyway, that's, that was my experience. What about you? I, I had a lovely time. I didn't have to stand up ever. I had to sit at the table and mumble, and then, uh, mumble. And then get burned. So uh, I, had a, I had a brilliant year. And um, so they paid me to learn how to ride a horse, which was a pretty mental thing from somebody from Luton. We're going to pay you to learn to ride a horse, something you've always wanted to do. And this lot lived like they were living miles away from where you learned to ride a horse with Devil's Horsemen. It's 10 minutes from where I live. So the second day D got wind of this, he said, You really like horse riding, don't you? So when any of these fuckers don't want to do it, you can do their cancellation. I'm like, Yeah. Well, maybe not Graham. Graham's an expert, so is Jefferson. Right, not you two, other people in the company. Are, are you an expert horseman? I didn't realize. No, I just didn't like it, so I stopped going. And, uh, there you go. So, no, any of his cancellations? Technically, the opposite of an expert. Actually, yes. Yeah. A cowardly novice. Oh. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I took his lessons. Yeah. So, so, so why did you not like horse riding? 
Um, because I'm not very good at it, and I'm not very, I don't know, I'm not like, um, wasn't very stark about it, it was a little bit petulant, and the lady said I was doing it wrong, so I thought she, maybe she was an idiot, and that uh, I was, and it was worth spending more time doing it. That was being my outlook. She seems very mature. Yeah. Well, I spent the whole show sitting at a table, rolling the ball Why are you riding the horse at all? Just wait, second series. Sorry, man. <laughs> yeah, thanks, mate. Rub it in. <laughs> I did quite a bit of horse riding, actually. Did a bit of galloping. A lot of it got cut, but I did. You were brilliant, but you had a hundred lessons. I did have a hundred <laughs> lessons. <laughs> and obviously you just talked about season two of the show. Do you, do you all kind of flip through the scripts every time you go, oh, I'm still alive at the end of that episode, or, or, or not? And how far in advance did you kind of know that you were? <laughs> Nobody <laughs> saw the body, did they? So. <laughs> Your evil twin was... Yes. But Barry, his brother, turns up in season two. Oh, I was in the auction. Looking very like Lord Lionel Strong. But the, the, the scripts changed as well, quite frequently. So you could never be absolutely sure that anybody was going to survive until the end of the week, really. Uh, yeah, they like to keep you on your toes, for sure. And I, I did go in knowing I was only going to last six episodes. At least I told you that. Okay, so let's break it up a bit. Let's have some questions from you guys. Um, hands in the air. Someone will come around with a mic. Hey, the lady with the shaved head. Or maybe it's a man, I don't know. Uh, hello to all of you. Does it work that way? Yeah, no, you don't get to pick. No, you, you just answer the questions. Yes. Okay, so you, you, you all star in the prequel to Game of Thrones. If you sing Game of Thrones, what is your favourite scene or moment from it? Well, the favourite scene from Game of Thrones? Yeah. Mine would be, there's a character, Hugh of the Vale. Um, he's quite pivotal to the plot. He's very handsome and good on a horse. Um, he dies in a joust. That was probably one of my favourite scenes. Game From Game of Thrones, yeah. Right. Right. Good answer. Yeah. Um, my favourite scene. Well, probably the most shocking scene to me was when uh, Sean Bean was uh, beheaded. I never, because we, we, we all know about that now and think, oh yeah, that's the kind of way TV is made. And it, but it was actually really quite groundbreaking. Although I suppose. Strictly speaking, Alfred Hitchcock did it in Psycho with Janet Leigh, just like killed his leading actress in, in the first 20 minutes or whatever. But yeah, that was a shocking moment. When he, I really did think, right up to the moment when they killed him, I thought, no, no, he's not, they, they can't kill Sean Bean. Although Sean Bean does get killed often. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, in fact, when I think about it, of course he was going to die. Yeah, totally, he was going to die. Yeah, totally, uh, but yeah, that was, that was my most memorable moment. What about you? Yeah. Well, you've just sold it. So, um, I'll have to think of another one. Oh, the Red Wedding? Oh, no, I, I was actually, I think my favourite shot. Yes. yes? Is it the long night when all the, uh, the the dead come back to life? And, yeah. And there's that scene, that shot of Kit when he's surrounded and the, the camera's above and he's just being swamped. I think that's my favourite shot. Mm. But that was my favourite moment, I think. The yeah. I remember when I saw that, thinking, oh, he must have been super uncomfortable in that scene. Yeah. Yeah. I felt a bit sympathy for him there, did you? Next question? Yeah. Uh, well, thank you, Jackson, for noticing my head. I actually shaved it for cancer research and raised 1,400 pounds. Well done. Well done. Um, we absolutely love House of Dragon, but this question is mainly for Graham. Uh, we adore you in my household, and also, obviously for most of your characters, you are playing a Scottish person, so I looked more for yes. Outlander. But why did you play a Scottish in House of Dragon? Good question. Good question. I'll tell you why. I spoke to them about it, and I felt that Harold Westerling needed to sound as if he was not from round there. That was literally the reasoning behind it. I said, I think it would be interesting to have him sound as if he is from abroad, so to speak, rather than part of the Targaryen world, where everybody talks like that and it's all terribly posh. Uh, well, actually, no, Paddy doesn't talk like that, does he? No. In fact, there's a few people that don't talk like that, but, but you know, you get the general idea. And then London, yeah, London people. You know, all the Targaryens sound like they live in London. Um, whereas I wanted Harold to sound like he had to 
get on his horse and come some considerable distance to actually serve the king. Um, a thankless task most of the time, I've got to say. Uh, literally, I mean, the, 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 the king's guard, the, they're not allowed to get married, they're not allowed to have relationships, they're not allowed any money, they're not allowed any land or title. I mean, what, so, I... <laughs> not what I was going to say, exactly, it's just to prove. But, well, no, I to wear all the armour. Oh, yes, all the all the uncomfortable armour and the small shoes. This hasn't quite answered the other Scottish. Yeah, that's the answer. <laughs> yes, the answer is because I wanted to move from a, from out from out of town. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. How big's your accent, man? How big? <laughs> How big is my accent? Anyway, that's the answer to your question. Yes. Hey, this is going to be very difficult sitting next to you. Right? <laughs> I feel that. Next question is going to be very difficult. Yeah. Hi, so I think one of the most important questions for all of you is um, are you team green or black and why? Am I what? You're talking about chocolate. No. <laughs> uh, uh, team green or You're black. doing in character or do you mean as pint of yourself, yourself, show? yourselves? Like which team are you? As, as Gavin, not Lord Lionel Strong. Yeah, as Gavin. Yeah. As Gavin. Uh, I, I'd probably be. Targaryen, I suppose. But as a punter, I just kind of like watching them beat each other up, so I'd rather yeah. be neutral. <laughs> I, yeah, I would probably lean towards the Targaryens, maybe, personally. I mean, I can't possibly speak for Harold, but uh, yeah. I would say, what about you? I'm green and black, man. Oh, yeah. Right. Is that. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay, fair enough. There you go. I wouldn't argue with any dragon to be honest, but anyway. Next! Uh, oh, hello over here. Yeah, hi. Um, hi there. First of all, I really, really love House of the Dragon. It's amazing. Um, I just wanted to ask, if you were a Targaryen, would you ride a dragon? And if so, what would you call your dragon? Graham's got a great name for his sword. Graham has a thing about the characters in the show having names for their swords. Um, so I'm sure he's got something crazy. I think I'd probably ride a, a, a weighty dragon who's probably a bit overweight called John. <laughs> well, just a bit slower than the other dragon. A bit slower, but always just like feeding, eating a bit more than they do at dinner. Yeah, but hard as fucking nails. Hard as nails. <laughs> you don't fuck um, with John. Yeah. Because unlike George R. R. Martin, I give people individual names as opposed to things that sound the same. Yeah, oh. you can tell he's dead. Um, <laughs> I'm not no, no wonder he's dead. I'm not afraid of John. <laughs> yeah. uh, Dragon, yeah, would I, would I ride one? I don't know. I, I sh I've got to be honest, I have a bit of a fear of heights. So I wouldn't be an ideal dragon rider. I'm more of the kind of guy on the ground. Maybe like air traffic control, guiding them into the air, kind of good luck, see you, see you come back, hope you come back safe, that kind of thing, rather than rather than leaping on board and just galloping off or whatever. They don't really gallop, do they? they well, what name would you have? Plum name. What name? What name would I have for the dragon, the dragon I don't ride? Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh gosh. I don't know. It's going to be sexy. Sexy. <laughs> sexy dragon. Like Trixie or something like that. <laughs> yes, and Trixie would always be, yes, sort of batting her eyelids at the other dragons. Like the one from Shrek? Yeah, yes, yes, the dragon from Shrek. You got pretty good just just right now. Oh dear. What well, well, I you got? Um, yeah, I would like, yeah, a very, very sort of over, over-sexed dragon with big <laughs> eyelashes called Trixie. I mean, it's maybe not what George imagines when he's doing these things, but that's it, it's what he imagines. It's why he just doesn't write it down. Yeah, okay, yeah. No, what, about, what, about, what about you? I don't know, it's a oh, come on. Like a really small one. A tiny dragon. Like, like, really? Yeah. But, but, but so it would actually defy physics. You wouldn't actually be able to get yes, off the ground. A, a, a lizard. <laughs> crawling along the ground, going, oh, 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 o
fun. Yeah. yeah. Why did I get the midget dragon? <laughs> I've really got a great picture now of everybody's dragons. John Trixie. John Trixie. Yeah. What's the name? What's the name? Uh, David. Tanny. David. 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 David the midget dragon. George. 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 Right. You. You guys should definitely run the next season. It'd be awesome. Yeah. It's been muted. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. There's a showrunner job going, actually. <laughs> Next question. Hello. Hello. Um, so my question for you, for you is um, were there any moments that made you shed a tear during filming or watching the show back? Oh, I'll, I'll answer that. Um, shedding tear generally every day. I was like a kid in a sweet shop, but when I watched Paddy walk through the throne room, in F8, which I just thought was absolutely beautiful. And he's such a wonderful actor, and what his journey of being such a decent human, um, that was really moving. And because he's a mate now, it was a bit like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that was lovely. So now, I, oh yeah, I'll go with you. Gavin's answer as well. Really? Yeah, I mean, it took so long, it's a tear of frustration, it's a half an hour walk. <laughs> <laughs> Just crying with frustration. Are you in that scene? What? Are you there? Yeah, I was there. How long did it take to film? Three weeks? It's three weeks, you didn't even see the back of my head. <laughs> Full costume. There was, well there was a lot of crying during the wedding. Wasn't there? Yeah, we had to, the wedding oh, scene took the wedding. Like four months. Oh, the, my wedding, God, wedding the wedding was the longest wedding in, in existence. Surrounded by dead animals. Yes, so there were a lot of stinking dead sheep heads littered around the, the set. So it got pretty, pretty tasty in there. I, mean, um, I know it's making it sound as tough down the tinsel mines, but being surrounded by animals that are rotting is pretty great. Yeah. That was a very long, long experience, that was, wasn't it? So not the kind of crying that you may be imagining, where we, where we actually show empathy for others. This is more just like, you know, when am I going to sit down? And can I, can I have a cup of coffee? Uh, that kind of crying. Um, yeah, Hal says all this crying for bedtime, so that's... There wasn't a lot of crying, no. No. Well, you felt nothing, didn't you? Yeah, nothing. I don't think that comes across on screen. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Hello. Oh, 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 oh. It's going. He's moving like the wind. It's me. Hi. Hello. Hi. I have a question for all, for all the actors. So did you remember maybe one funny moment from behind the scenes? Because I can imagine at the production of this day, anything weird can happen. So. Some mysteries from the set. Funny, funny things. Yeah, crazy things, funny things. Well, God, yeah, there was a lot, yes. Well, working with Jefferson on set every day was it fun. Um, well, there was, yeah, I mean, there was some very funny people on set. So, Reese Evans and Paddy uh, used to try and make people laugh a lot on set. Um, yeah, Reese. Yeah, you could not say your name in one scene, actually. Oh, he, 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 he was calling. He'd say, "Stop!" I was wrestling. He would. He would wrestling. Yeah, and that's when he would call. You know, Kristen would be. You know, Christmas Carol and all of this. He was, and he would just throw these things in. I remember there was one bit when we were on the bridge. I think when we were meeting Damon, and uh, and he was in the middle of doing a, a bit of dialogue, and Reese completely drunk. He had no idea what he was going to say next. Um, and uh, he was standing next to Fabienne, and the camera was sort of on him, and he, and he literally just went, he just went, Fab, Fab, it's your line. What are you doing? Come on. We're letting everybody down. And Fabienne just starts laughing and all the rest of it. And then just as the camera is going past, and you can't actually see Fab, literally, Reese just did this. He went, fuck Jesus. He hit me! What did you hit me for? And he was constantly trying to get Fab into trouble on set. He would be calling him names, he would be referring to how his helmet made him look on set, which was pretty rude. He was constantly doing that. Whenever he would pass him, 
he would just whisper something that would then send Fabian into Freeze. Is a is a naughty man. He's a very very naughty. Man. There was a scene in the uh, episode three where on the uh, doing the hunt scene, and and this lovely character wanders up to the king with his special spear, and Reese and I are in back of shot. And he has to walk past us with his spear, and Reese and I sort of did this look to each other like, oh god, look at this arsehole with his spear. And it got bigger and bigger and bigger. So by the end of it, we were literally like two old washing women going, oh, like that. And then Greg came up to us, the director and said, you know that, um, that look you're doing is getting kind of big. And Reese just said, let's make it fucking bigger, Gav. <laughs> he was, yeah, he was very bad. Now, the, and I remember, you remember when we were, bringing Paddy out of the coach. When we arrived, we arrived at the castle and David Horowitz, who played the Grand Maester, comes down and Paddy falls to the ground, right? And may I just mention, by the way, that the only person that picked Paddy up at that point was me. There was him pretending to come in and help. He didn't do anything. How the fuck you pick my just arm? arm like that. And I was little. You had your arm around I don't have my arm around my tiny shoes. And I was lifting him up, I got to the, but we would, because he was constantly laughing because David would come out and say, um, what did he say, get the, uh, get the leeches, get the leeches, prepare the leeches, get the leeches. And, um, and we just would, because they, they weren't technically shooting dialogue on that scene, we would just make his treatment into the, it's time for the anal probe, your majesty, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and we were just picking him up, that's right, you know, prepare the enema. So, the colonic irrigation is waiting. Um, so apologies to any of you that have had those. It's no fun. It's no fun. There's always somebody in the audience who's just had a colonic irrigation, you know, you know and not enjoying it. You need it through that warning, mate. No, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, next question. Hi, I just want to say I love House of the Dragon. Hello. Love you guys. Uh, I have a question. So, as yourselves, like, what house, like, what member, which house would you be a part of? Like, not your characters, but yourselves in Westeros. Oh, God. Probably the Lannisters, because apparently we've got some lions. Lions? I mean, naturally, the lions, I believe. Oh, right. right. Um, yeah, probably the Starks, actually. It's a bit cold, though, isn't it? Where they, they begin to talk like that every episode. Yeah, uh, yeah, sure, yeah. Right, deep, yeah, sure. Yes. Who's the man that got his eyes gouged out? The little fella, but the big fella. What? Yeah, where does he come from? That sounds nice. <laughs> dawn. 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 Well, that's quite warm, isn't it? Dawn. Well, is it warm? What's the temp? What's the weather like in Dawn? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I'm not saying it's all about the weather, but. Would it be a good it's a big factor? It's, it's, it's really hot. hot, like not too hot. Be it's beaches, like staying hot. Beaches, yeah. So, it, but, but vegetation and stuff. I pick yeah. dawn. You can't have dawn. I'm having dawn. Well, Thank you. We could both pick from dawn. No, I'm having dawn a look. Wow. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wait. Is that is that the one that um not the one that oh god what was his name that Pedro Pascal played? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that the same place? So he was dawn. Right. Yes, right him. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I've watched it. I know. We have watched it. It was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. I remember when Pedro got that job. Yes, I just finished working with him. He was very, very excited. Jealous? Oh, I was. Yeah, um, yeah. Thanks for spotting that. I was actually jealous, yes. Yes, I was. I'm not ashamed to admit it. Uh, but yeah, Dawn. So we both go for Dawn and you, you just live in the freezing north. Hard as nails. <laughs> and your on your dragon. John. John. <laughs> Big John of, of Stark. What about you? Where would you choose? Lady who asked the question. Talk to your friend now. You can yeah, you know, that. Not interested now. Such bad answer. Absolutely so bad. <laughs> just just so bored. Question. So bored of the answer. That's all. Literally. Just just no. Let, <laughs> yeah. Ask the question. Should move on. It was just for the grab. Next question. Next question. Yes. Hi. Um, so obviously in episode six, there was a significant time jump, and um, so significant Alison and Rhaenyra changed quite a bit. 
Yes. I just wondered if you would, either as yourselves or your characters, would rather the tangent not be as big so you could flesh out your characters a bit more? I would have loved that because I definitely would have been in a lot more episodes. Because <laughs> there's ten years of me and Hand of the King which nobody sees. I was very good in those ten years. That's really good. Off, off stage work. I was, there was a lot of off stage work. A lot of sending crows and ravens. Oh, right. Adventures, right. Right. Adventures. Well, you were you were overseeing a very stable period as well. Very stable. Yeah. I think that's a really good question, and I'd say yeah, that was tough. That was tough. Best question award. It was tough because yeah, you don't have time to flesh it out, and you don't really. We just had a change of shoes. That was the only thing. My beard got a bit longer. Greyer. Yeah, I lost all my hair. <laughs> Reese Ippens looks younger in episode 10 than he does in episode 1. That's true. It is his true. Yeah. yeah, some people barely aged. Well, Kristen Cole, who basically just had a haircut. <laughs> that was it. He just went to the bar. Mullets went out of fashion. <laughs> mullets went out, went out of fashion. He didn't change. Let's try. Uh, times change. Yes, yes, yeah, she can't wear that mullet anymore. I'm sorry, Kristen. 1961. That was a very, yeah, that was quite funny. That he really didn't change at all. Yeah, in ten years. We changed inside. Next question. Oh, he's coming, he's coming for you, buddy. Ed, I guess this is for all of you. Uh, what we've seen, uh, like, at 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 can we do it again? But I'll go. Ed, Ed, guess what was it like to act uh, with the two different Rhaenyras? The two different Rhaenyras? Yeah. Yeah. The first one was younger, <laughs> and the second one, she was older. <laughs> and she was, the first one was shorter as well. Yeah, and not from England. And not from England. She less. Yes, she was less. She was. She was from Australia, and she was lovely, uh, and uh, everyone was. So, um, yeah. What was the what was the difference? Uh, it was a huge. Like they had, they did a great job of having the same energy at the core, the same fire yes. in their belly. But and they did a great job at the time. Job. When Emma came in, she was much more grounded, and what they. Well, the, well the, one of the weird things was, of course, we shot with the older version before we shot with the younger version. So we started with episode seven and two, Ep episode seven and one. Uh, no, so, was it one? Are you sure? No, 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 no. Because we we shot loads before Millie uh, came on board as we are. No, no. I think we should break this up. And... No. So we shot all the way. We were doing it for like two months before they joined. Anyway, I think it was a good deal. Excuse us. It was going to be dragon fight, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, that was like tricks. Well, we'll work it out in the end. Next question. This lady. Yep, over the back there. I've got a question for Graham. Uh, you played Deedstra in The Witcher. Yes. Uh, but who from Westeros do you think would beat Geralt in a fight? Who from Westeros would beat Geralt in a fight? I, I'm, I've got to be honest, I, I can't, I don't think anybody, right? No. I mean, Geralt. No, he's, you yeah, know, talk about hard as nails. No, I mean, no, nobody. I literally can't think of anybody. Uh, he would, he's a beast. He would just destroy everybody um, and barely break a sweat. Yes, Superman. Yes. As, he, as he's known in The Witcher. Yeah. I used to refer to him on set as that. I'd say, hey. Sometimes Clark. I call him Clark. Yeah. But yeah, no. Yeah, he kills everything. Have you watched The Witcher? Not watched no, it. So kills, sorry. He kills monsters all the time, he has them for breakfast. Like it's he, not actually he, real, bro. He's yeah. constantly killing monsters. That's what he does. He kills monsters. Yeah. 
Especially you know, when you sound like you know a lot about the show, would you kill a dragon in this chat? Geralt, would you kill a dragon? Yeah, of course. No hesitation. Yeah. It's a dragon killing show that Geralt is the best at. So then, I'm very. Next question. I have a question for you, I knew you did, that's why I picked you. We had a connection. Uh, I just wanted to ask, what were your thoughts on the family before playing one of the characters in it, and then right after playing one of the characters in it? Like, did you feel like you were defending it more after you played the character? I think I've got the gist of what you said. Um, what, what, what was that? If can Garrett kill a dragon? I think the tricky thing was to not do an impression, because I don't think my grandfather is much like me, you know? And if my great great grandfather had anything like probably this, you know, giant African American man, maybe. I don't know, there's no similarities, right? So you have to let it go, but then also you have to have some kind of threat to connect it for the audience more than anything. So it was fun. But I think you see more of it as the characters get older and they get more embroiled in all the infighting and stuff. Okay, next one. Where are we? I can't see them. Hiya. Hello. Hi. Hiya. Um, my question is, um, if there's any part of your story arc for your characters in the first season that you would change, I mean, apart from obviously dying, um, <laughs> what would you change or what would you move forward into the second season that you'd like to see? I tell uh, Viserys never to trust Lannister. Well, I'd ask for a story arc. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just anything that's got slight bent in it, rather than just the flat line of office work. Yeah, yeah, that's a little chase. You, not, not much happens to me. I'm a slow burner. Why that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had a big arc. Well, yeah, well, I mean, I don't know, I... Sitting. Sitting, that's what I would change, yes. I would sit. I would just say at one point, excuse me guys, I just need to take, take, a, take a break. Um, no, I, no, actually, probably not. I wouldn't change anything in my story arc, to be honest. I was quite happy with my story arc. Uh, so, yeah, sorry, no, I wouldn't. Nothing. Hello. Good question and trying to get information about season two. I like the way you disguised it. Yes, yeah, very, very cunning. Next question. He's coming. He's moving. He's going to the back. He's going to the back. Front of the set. And he's just so quick. Oh, oh he's over there. The lanyard is flying. Hi. Um, if you had um, house words, so like the Lannisters have hear me roar, what would your house words be? Yeah. What would your house words be? So what house well, is Yeah, the Strongs don't have one. Um, so I think it would be something like, because the Strongs come from near the Trident where the three rivers meet. So probably something wrong with... Oh, I'm actually trying to be serious now. <laughs> you be yeah, serious. No, I'm dying to know what you're going to say. Great. Don't put the fucking pressure on, Greg. No. Um, it's as strong as three rivers. The strongest three rivers or something. Oh, you mean like a motor? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, what, what, a Lannister's is what? Yeah. Hear me roar. Is it? Is that like a pop song? <laughs> um, so what would the, what would the Westerly motto be? Gosh. You take Give the hand, I'll take That's the right. chair. Yeah, yeah, I need to I'll sit do. down. <laughs> Always standing, never sitting. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, never turn your back on any of the bastards. That would definitely be. Yes. But because there's so many people that you don't want to turn your back on in that place. Like everybody, basically. Yeah, actually, that's probably what the strong would say, don't trust anybody. Yeah, yeah. It's probably brought up, the Westerlings are told at birth. I thought Lannister would we always pay our debts. That's just a saying. What are they called? That's just a saying. What are they called? Oh, Lannister's always pay Lannister's always pay their debts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's obviously and made up and by, by some debt owing Lannister. Yeah. Right, okay. Right, we're doing a lot of debt, we better come up with a new catch. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pretend we always pay those debts. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, Dave Ebro is a big white person. Oh, no. Yeah, that's it. What's the name of the song that? Lady Gaga? Katy Perry. No, Katy Perry. Yeah. She was at Lannister as well? Yeah. Right. I mean, given her morals, she probably is, yeah. Okay. Next question. Hi, hello. Um, this is kind of a follow-up question to when they asked like what your what your kind of dragons would be. Um, if given the opportunity, would you ride? Would you actually ride a dragon? And keep in mind that Kit Harrington, the actor for Jon Snow, nearly got his balls shredded off while riding the animatronic. It really are filming the latest season, so oh, right. would you still ride the dragon? Yeah. Um. I well, I wouldn't. Yeah, I, I've ridden a mechanical goat. Um, I mean, it's just something that I've done. And, uh, That's a lot. yeah, in, in a previous incarnation. And that was a very, very challenging experience, riding a mechanical goat. And I think I had to jump off it as well, which was quite tricky. Uh, so no, I would, I would not get on a dragon. I would just look and admire it from a distance and watch people like, like Jefferson here jump on dragons. Yeah, uh, it's very similar to the other question. No, that was about what you call the dragon. dragon. And oh, right, so this is so it. If, what would, would you it, get on a no, I, would, I don't think it has If dragons right. existed. No, it doesn't have things to hold on to unless you have a saddle. From is there literally down? nothing you can hold on to on a dragon? Right? It's just... Don't they have... What? Nothing at all. There are no handy little oh, horns. I'm not an expert on dragons, I've no idea. We're not expert on dragons. I don't think I'd get on one. Not a chance. No, definitely Would, would you not. get on one, question man? Would you, would you do it? Would you want to go? Yes? No. Yeah, very wise. Yeah. Very wise. Yeah. 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 The question is for all three of you. So in the show there's a lot of characters that are proficient with the sword. So Dave is proficient, also the King's Guard. But characters aside, out of the actors, who do you think would be the best with the sword? Who do you think would be the most lethal swordsman? All three of you. Uh, three of us. Out of three of us. Um, oh, of everyone. Uh, everyone. Uh, I'd, I'd say Matt. Come on. Graham's gonna throw it, he's gonna throw it, oh, he's out of brown then. Yeah. Hey, just saying, you know, done a lot of sword fighting, that's all. That's all. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure Matt's very good. I'm sure he put in a good effort. But in the end of the day, he'd be the one on the ground crying. So, fuck, fuck, yeah, fuck, bring it down, lady. To be fair, I don't know what Paddy's experience of sword fighting is, but he can box pretty Yeah, he's well. a good boxer, Paddy. Like a proper boxer. He's a good boxer. So there's a certain chance that he's probably got skills with a sword. Yeah, but no. There we go. He's just he Well, no, I mean, sense. no, look, you wouldn't say, you wouldn't go up to Mike Tyson and say, hey, show me, show me your rapier and dagger work, Mike. You know, oh, are you good with a broadsword? But you don't no, know. He's, got he's just punch you in the face. Yeah, well, yeah, but if you've got a sword, and Mike Tyson's got his fists. Yeah. It doesn't matter how good the boxer is, yeah. you just went for the Of course the person with the sword would win! You know, like, oh yeah, show me your kung fu or whatever. No, I've got a bloody great huge sword. No, you would. Is that your Mike Tyson impersonation? Yeah. Yeah. Did you give me your sword? I said, sit down, punch your face and bite you. Yeah. Guys, we're going to get him. Please, please. Have you ever met, have, have you ever, have you ever met him? I, I, I met him. I met him at a, at a convention. Yeah, he did a he did an impersonation of SpongeBob. <laughs> Mike Tyson did an impersonation of SpongeBob to the actor who plays SpongeBob because he's such a massive fan of SpongeBob. Yes, this actually happened in a bar with me, Maz Mikkelsen, Nolan North from Uncharted, Mike Tyson, and the actor who plays SpongeBob. It was a very surreal moment. Isn't that terrible? I can't remember his name. He's so just a SpongeBob. What's his name? Tom Kenny. Yes, Tom Kenny. Tom Kenny. Yeah. Yeah. So there was Mike Tyson doing an impersonation of a SpongeBob guy without a sword. We we had Mike Tyson at a show who 
he met Dave Prowse, who's Darth Vader, and it was a proper fanboy moment. So he is, yeah. uh, again, no sort of score like Sabres or anything, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, nice, it's nice when that happens, actually. But I will be saying to Matt later, this is, well, Graham says he could take in the sword fight, so. Yeah, more a whistling. By the sounds of it, Graham can take anybody in a sword fight. Yeah, yeah. A whistling contest. Yeah, he's been whistling, or. I'm, t- I'm not a bad whistler. Is he, is he a good whistler as well? Known for his whistle? Very good whistler, yeah. yeah. I never heard of whistle. Yeah. Whistle, make him whistle later. Your CV must be so I'm long. I'm a bit whistling too. <laughs> I could be. Yes. Yeah. your first whistle, Howard. No, I'm, I'm saving it from that. <laughs> Next question. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Hello Mike. Do you think that House of the Dragon has more of a more potential than Game of Thrones? So like a lot of people are disappointed with the end of Game of Thrones. Yeah, that's a good question. More potential than Game of Thrones. Oh, there's potential. No, potential. Yeah. Um, it's gonna get good. I think it does. Yeah. I honestly do. Um, because it's a great family drama, you know, and that's, and they're always a great foundation for, for really exciting and difficult stories, like, you know, you've got loads of them now, like Succession, it's basically a, a, a family drama, Yellowstone, it's a family drama, I mean, even The Godfather, is a family drama, King Lear, Neighbours, 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 very good, good Yeah, 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 um, so yes, in answer to your question, I think it does. Do you, do you agree or...? You said potential, right? Yeah. Potential, yes. So when you said family drama... What do you think? Yeah. More potential than Ford going forward in the series? I think HBO, the whole world of uh, George R.R. R. Martin has a lot of potential. Yeah. So I think th- this is the tip of the iceberg. Okay, well, we're just about out of time. So for you three guys, what, what's next? What are you working on at the moment, if you can tell us? Um, House of the Dragon, season two. It's going to be great. There's a lot of potential. <laughs> oh, you've got a list. Oh, uh, terribly impressive. Um, I am working uh, well. I can't say ex- no. Yeah, sure you can. No, I can't really. No, no, I can't. I can't. I can't. No. Um, I'm doing. I'm writing a book. I'm writing a book. Yeah, I'm writing a book. And um, another Clan Lions book with Sam uh, from from uh, from Outlander. So yeah, we're doing that about our trip to New Zealand. So I'm doing that literally at the moment. Um, but I can't. No, I can't really say. Tell you about the other stuff. Sorry, very boring. Uh, I'm writing a book on Graham sword fighting. <laughs> um, no, I'm in a, a play at the National Theatre at the moment, um, and I've got a. <laughs> here's something that'll make you laugh. I am in the new Magic Mike film. <laughs> oh? Yeah, cheer if you want to see this fat man dance. Uh, <laughs> dance, fat man. Yeah, you clearly say a lot of us too. That comes out uh, in February, and then there's a few things I'm in that come out, and then there's something else I can't talk about. So. But yeah, bits. Yeah. Excellent. Well, unfortunately, we have run out of time, so show you appreciate once more. Right, how's the dragon panel?